So does the president then blame universities for that affordability issue? And do you really think that that rule's working that you talked about? Well, the rule is still in progress. It's going to be proposed and then ultimately put in place. But I think when it is in place, it's definitely going to go after the, the worst performers in this space, the, the, the colleges and universities that are uh, charging the most and delivering the worst results. I think other reforms uh, are necessary. The president's willing to work with Congress to talk through what those may be. Uh, but as we said, there's another uh, goal here, which is to uh, ease some of that cost in the, in the meantime uh, for lower income and middle income families who are trying to send their kids to school. And that's what the Pell Grant uh, does. And, and, I, and I would just note that uh, not so long ago, the Pell Grant, typical Pell Grant, covered about 75 percent of the cost of college. Now it co covers way less than half the cost of college. It has been devalued over time, and that's one of the reasons why the president's been aggressive about increasing the size of the Pell Grant. The, the Department of Education, as you said, pre-approved 16 million people for, for the forgiveness program. Was that meant to put political pressure on the court because you knew that this was going through the court process, you didn't have a decision yet, and, and were government resources then wasted on this? No, I, I think we explained to borrowers what the process is going to be. We're going to set up this website. As soon as you send us your information, people behind the scenes at the department are going to be working extremely quickly to validate your information and to decide whether you're approved or not. That's exactly what we did. Uh, the court, unfortunately, the, the, the lower court in this case, stepped in before we could actually take that final step and actually discharge debt for approved borrowers. But you, but, took, you took those approvals when the court process was happening. You didn't have an answer. Right, but we didn't know what, that the court was going to uh, enjoin us from actually doing debt relief. That was still an open question at the time. We had an obligation to borrowers uh, to go, keep moving with the process as long as we legally could. And I want to make one, one more point here, because the debt relief program was announced alongside, if you remember, a resumption in payments. So we had a student loan pause in effect. In August, the president announced that we were going to have this debt relief uh, as a lead-in to student loan payments resuming in January of this year. And so there was a uh, time pressure on us to make sure that borrowers who were applying were getting their debt relief quickly before they had that obligation to start making payments, because, of course, that discharge relief could mean that their payments would go down when they had to start uh, pay making payments again. Okay, go ahead, Phil. Thank you, Karine.